Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to a Kerbal Space Program video. This is going to be a very little edited video. It's uh, 5 o'clock in the morning and I have to go to work soon, but you'll get this at about, about, about noon, maybe just before noon. That way it gives YouTube some time to clear it up and all that good stuff. Because I notice if I put out a video too soon, it will um, be fuzzy and stuff. But anyway, uh, to the point, I effed up big time. Uh, the well, I was going. Oh shit! This <laughs> is it's kind of hard because it it hurts. Um. So yeah, uh, I went and try to change a game, a saved game file. The one that I use for Sandbox. And the one that I use for Sandbox was saved under the game file of default. The reason for that is because of the fact that I didn't think I was going to be using it for too long, but ended up using it a lot. So I wanted to name it something like Veos's Sandbox. Well, I did that by going into the actual files, and, uh, <laughs> damn, um, and make changing the name default into Veos's sandbox, which is all well and good, but when I went into the game, I noticed that all the thumbnails for the crafts have disappeared when you, when you go to load them up in the game. And in order to make them reappear, you gotta save the craft file and get out and go to another one, save the craft file, get out, go to another one. And it it got very long and very boring, and here it was ten minutes later, and I'm going, damn, there's maybe I should just go back to default, right? So in the game, even though on in the files I had switched the the file from default to Veos's sandbox. In the game, it sh still show showed default, and I was tired. I wish it was just something I, I really need to stop doing when it, when I'm working on uh, computer stuff, like files and whatnot. But I figured that default had all the crafts already in it, like last time, like before I changed it. <laughs> And so, instinctively, I deleted Veos's sandbox. And then opened up default, thinking that all the crafts were going to be in there. I had, for a split second, forgotten that I had taken the default file and renamed it Veos's sandbox. So, when I deleted Veos's sandbox in-game, it deleted all of the sandbox crafts. It deleted the Star Raker. It deleted the underwater craft. It deleted everything. Now I do keep backups of my file saves, but for the longest time I didn't touch it. So there are some files that are saved, but many of the newer ones are gone. Um. It's, it, it, it's very dis... It's... I mean, I'm beating myself up, but, um... Luckily, I've been playing this game for over a decade, so... I have the blueprints, I guess you could say, of these files in my head. Plus, I have videos to go back on, too, and to look at what I did. So, it's gonna be a little bit of a journey trying to trying to rebuild all these crafts but if if and when I find time to do it uh, they will be better because of the fact that when I made them I um, didn't know certain little things that I do now so that's that's where I'm at I uh, I, I, I effed up I have to big and uh, I might be making videos of rebuilding some of these crafts. Um, we'll see. Uh, so, 
very disheartening. Uh, uh, I sat there staring at the screen for the longest time, wondering just how in the hell did I so royally effed up. But that's where we're at right now. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, anyway, uh, on a more positive note, before I effed up, I was actually working on building uh, like a battleship tutorial. And when I was building this battleship, I realized about halfway that the battleship that I was building was something based off of, a, of an old design. And the old design was that of putting armor all around the ship except for the front and the back. The front being where the missiles would launch and the back being where the engines were. So if the ship got hit, it'd have to get hit on its side because the top was kind of crunchy. This was, of course, an older version of Battleship that I was that uh, that I had built in the past. The newer versions put all the armor up in front, and everything is modular. So if I was actually to go against somebody in game, like one v one, then if they shot a missile at me from long range, and I'm not talking about like a BD armory missile, I'm talking about like a stock missile where they have to control it in order to run into my ship. Uh, slamming into the front of the ship, there would be different levels of shielding and uh, cushioning for the rest of the vessel on the inside. It would not only lower the uh, hit, the hit box basically, because they're trying to aim for uh, the front of the ship but uh, there is a whole bunch of different measures to keep the ship from being destroyed within maybe a, a few shots. So it could take a few hits, basically. So in PvP, I figured that that would be the best, the best thing to do. Also, it was modular, so if anything happened to the outside armor, it could break off and still be in the fight, even though it'd be super crunchy. Um... And if for some reason they sent a fighter my way, right, the fighter would be intercepted by drones that had the star shot, and then the star shot could take care of the fighters if the fighters did get close enough to where they could go and shoot at the craft from underneath the belly away from the armor. Because the belly was pretty much the, the weakest spot, but at the same time I'm looking at um, the ability to... Um, uh, for Delta V, less armor means more Delta V, but at the same time, where's the armor app? Where's the armor more likely to be shot at? And that's the front of the craft when it comes to long range missiles and stock. And I get a lot of people that be like, oh, well, I could just take the missile and stop in mid flight and turn around and shoot your belly. The problem is, is that if you did or were able to slow down and do that, the amount of time it takes you to slow down, aim, and then fire again. I would have already had a drone out there firing at you. So the likelihood of you being able to do that would be slim to none. And hey, people get lucky, right? Maybe I miss the entire time and you're able to hit the underbelly and destroy the battleship, right? Good for you, but very unlikely. So, you know, this is a positive note. Um, Good thing is I still have these crafts. I have the old warship and I have the newer warship still that I had saved outside of <laughs> outside of the uh, the let's say the the the, the great f up, right? <sighs> anyway, so to, to end this video, um, there was someone in chat that said basically that um, for the underwater uh, craft that you saw that I built a, a video ago uh, that they said that the the video itself in a sense in so many words was flawed because of the fact that uh, scatterer changes the physics of the water and therefore that's why I was able to to build the craft to go underwater and and fly and so I went to a purely um, modless um, game I 
from memory, I tried to the best I could, rebuilt the craft and tested it in the water and it still flies around in the water just fine. I did find out that it, it the, the non-stock water is uh, more, more, uh, has a lot more drag, right? And so in order to get out of the water, you'd probably have to activate rockets and then go back to air breathing. So yeah, in a sense, I guess a scatterer does mess around with the water like that, so you can't travel at 40 plus meters per second underwater, that you know, your top speed is probably about 20. Um, still, it's something that you could get around if you worked around, there's, there's, there's a way to get around it. But uh, yeah, I, I did not know. Well, actually I kind of had a hint, right? That scatterer messed around with the water physics. But, uh, well, yeah, there you go. That's the truth. The, the craft can still work. But, um, also, in, in a way, the uh, stock water is a lot better because it doesn't have waves. So if you wanted to travel along the surface of the stock water, uh, you wouldn't be running into a bunch of bumpiness. And so it's easier to land on and easier to take off from. Yeah, there, so there's that. I guess you win some and lose some from scatterer to stock. But uh, anyway, um, that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Uh, if you really liked this video, I don't see why you would. <laughs> it's about me effing up. Um, then please hit that like button for me. And if you really, 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 really like the content that I make, uh, consider subscribing. We have a bunch of content about SSTOs and stuff, mostly KSP. And uh, we have also a membership program if you're interested. All right. I uh, love you all. Take care. And I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Gosh, damn.